Hello everyone, welcome to the Force Plate Coach YouTube channel. My name is John McMahon and in this video I'm going to be explaining what a Force Plate is. This seemed like an obvious place to start. Uh, if anyone's seen the video I dropped earlier this week, which was just a general introduction to what my channel is going to be about, then you know through that and also the title of the channel that it's going to be a focus on Force Plates throughout. So it seemed like a good place to start, um, so let's get straight to it. So what is a Force Plate? Well, simply put, a Force Plate is a device that measures reaction forces uh, we call them reaction forces because it's based on Newton's third law, which is the law of reaction. And that states when a force is applied to an object, that object applies a force that's opposite in direction, but equal in magnitude. And so what it is that we're really measuring through force plates is what we commonly refer to as the ground reaction force. And that's because most of the time the force plates are placed on the ground. And so I'm going to explain that in a bit more detail in a minute. The reason that I've got forces with the S surrounded in rounded brackets is because different force plate systems will measure different force plate directions or force directions I should say. So a lot of systems will measure just a vertical orientated ground reaction force but other systems will also give you the medial lateral ground reaction forces and also the anterior posterior ground reaction forces. So it's important when considering which force plate to buy that you consider what the application is mainly going to be. Um, a lot of the multi-directional force plates are mainly used in clinical settings and for most of the performance-based measures that you're likely undertake in as a sports practitioner then you'll be all set with a force plate system that gives you the vertical component of the ground reaction force. So if you've not seen a force plate system before then this image has been kindly donated by Hawking Dynamics. Um, it represents their dual force plate system and so I just want to give them a quick shout out. So if you've not checked out Hawking Dynamics, then I've put on their handle for both their Instagram accounts and also their Twitter accounts. So I strongly recommend that you go and check those guys out. And again, thank you to them for allowing me to use the image in this video. So what you can see here is you've got two force plates for one for each foot, because a lot of the assessments that we do, particularly in sports scenarios, are going to be bilateral in nature. So you can place one foot on each of the force plates, and then the forces are acquired in the vertical direction simultaneously. And then if you wanted to, you can separate those forces out into both the left and right leg contributions, or you can sum them and get the overall bilateral forces that are being produced and applied to the center of mass. And I'll discuss that in, in further videos uh, further down the line. So what these basically do, like I said a minute ago, is measure the reaction force. So when athletes are stood on a force plate and they push down into that force plate system, what the force plate system is giving us is the force that's equal in magnitude but opposite direction. So you can think of that as the mirror image of the forces that are being produced by the athletes as they try and like extend their ankles, knees and hips and effectively push that ground away for most of the tests that they're likely to be doing. And so we refer to force as a vector because it's got a magnitude and a direction and they're commonly denoted by an arrow like you can see in the image here. And so whenever you see uh, the arrow, the arrow head itself represents the direction at which that vector is orientated and also the size of the vector, or in this case the arrow I should say, denotes the, la the largeness or the magnitude of that vector. So what you could see in that example a minute ago is that those arrows are the same length, therefore they're equal magnitudes, but the vector is different because of the directional component. This time it's the orientation up vertically, where the force plates are effectively pushing the athlete back as they press down into the plate to allow them to propel themselves upwards, for example. So whenever you see an arrow during these videos that I'm presenting, that denotes a, a vector and for the most part they'll be orientated vertically because that's mainly the vertical component of the ground reaction force that we're going to analyse going forward. And if you see them going off at a tangent, then that represents the direction that force is being applied. So most force plates work using a strain gauge system. Some also work using piezoelectric systems. Piezoelectric systems use crystals and those crystals will convert electrical energy into mechanical energy or vice versa depending on how they've been set up. Whereas strain gauges, which are sometimes referred to as load cells, they'll detect the resistance, or the electrical resistance that is, that's picked up when a load or a strain is applied to that system. So with most strain gauge systems, they have the strain gauges or load cells placed in the four corners of each force plate. So for example, with the Hawking dynamic system, where they've got the two force plates side by side, that'll give you two by four load cells placed in each corner, and that'll effectively convert the electrical output that's registered by those strain gauges into a Newton's output. So obviously the SI unit for force is Newton's, that's based on Sir Isaac Newton of course and his uh, underpinning laws like I mentioned earlier. And that's all based on a system calibration 
Now, most force plate systems don't require you to calibrate their system over time. Um, some of them do, however, and you can do that by placing known incremental masses onto the force plate system and just making sure that you get good agreement between the forces that have been outputted through the software that's been used and the known masses that have been placed on the plate. Um, however, whichever system you're using, make sure you read the user guide and also make sure that you keep on top of any servicing that they recommend just to make sure that the force plate calibration is, is obviously working as well as it can be to make sure that your results are as good as you can be effectively. So force plates are mainly used across sport and clinical settings. Now given my expertise and my background, I'm mainly going to be producing content that relates to using force plates in a sport setting, but please don't be put off if you are a, a clinical expert or a clinician I should say, uh, because I will be producing content that will cross over to some of the tests and some of the variables that you might be interested in when it comes to clinically assessing athletes or even some of the patients that you might have in your own private clinic. So that was just a short video this time. It was just to give you an introduction to what force plates actually are. Like I said at the start, it was important to me to produce this first video just so that everybody knows what a force plate is, given that it's so aligned to what the force plate coach YouTube channel is going to be about. So thank you for watching. Again, thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel so far. Um, I've put my Instagram and Twitter handle just at the bottom there. Like I said in my first video uh, that I put out earlier this week, if you do have any questions or any topics that you would like me to cover going forward as the channel kind of grows and some of these first introductory sessions are included, um, then please do let me know and I'll do my best to accommodate them uh, as and when I can record the videos. So thank you for watching.